Today I'm on the Beaver River and I'm photographing a waterfall. I'm gonna walk you through my process of what I do to photograph waterfalls. So I've just picked out a nice little drop at the top of the river canyon or the river gorge. And uh, looking at it, I really like how the water comes in from multiple different directions here. Gives the, it's gonna give the final picture a lot of uh, dynamic feel to it because the movement is coming from everywhere. And then it comes towards the viewer and then past them as well. So there's a good directional flow in this image. We're gonna have to do a little bit of development to bring that out. So to pull off this shot, um, I'm using the Singray Brian Hansel waterfall polarizer on the front of my lens. And what this is, is a polarizer and an ND filter and a little secret sauce mixed together. It helps get you long exposures on slightly overcast days like today. So you can see up there in the sky, we have some uh, blue sky and partially cloudy atmosphere. So what I'm doing is I'm waiting for a darker cloud to come over the waterfall so when it's over the waterfall, it gets rid of all the harsh shadows that sunlight causes, and it allows you to get a slightly longer exposure. So using this polarizer, I'm getting about a second, a second and a half exposure, which is giving me some nice blur. Let's get a shot here, because it's really pretty right now. To use a polarizer, you have to thread it on the front of your lens, and after it's threaded on the front of your lens, you'll notice that there's two parts to it. So there's a there's a, the part that goes into your lens, and then there's a part that can rotate. As you rotate that polarizer, you're gonna see the effect. And what you're looking for is the reflections to disappear off the surfaces, uh, such as rock and the water. A lot of people will see that because it looks like things are getting darker in the image instead of brighter, and you just keep rotating until you reach the darkest point. Uh, there might be slightly different reflective surfaces that are angled slightly different, so some might get brighter and some might get darker. So the create, you have to look for the creative effect that you want and keep rotating it until those areas that you want dark turn dark. And that makes everything just kind of uh, get a little bit more contrasty and in addition to the contrast you get brighter colors if you have any colors in your image. So for the picture I'm using my pretty typical waterfall settings. So somewhere between f11 and f16 so you get maximum depth of field throughout the shot and uh, the higher the aperture number which is actually a little bit of a lie but uh, let's believe it. So uh, you know the higher the number, the higher the F number, you're gonna get a longer exposure. So instead of using F11, you could use F16 and double the length of your exposure. In this case, because it is a fairly sunny day, that's what I'm doing is I'm going to F16. But if I can, I try to stay at F11 because it's sharper on my lens. Almost out of this uh, gray clouds, there's just some blue sky and that's gonna ruin it. So we'll head down uh, after I get a couple more pictures. We have our images. I'm going to walk back to the car and we'll head into the office and give you a few processing tips on how to process your waterfall shots to make them look the best that they can. I'll see you once we get inside. So here's that waterfall image in Lightroom. We're gonna do some basic edits. I have a three-step editing process that I do. The first step is just to look at the image and identify the flow. The second step is to do overall global adjustments. And then the third step is to do the localized kind of uh, adjustments for flow. So with this image going into step one, what I see is the flow is what I want it to do is I want your eyes to come in down here and just be able to go up and explore the different waterfalls up above it. And then one of the other things that I like to do when I'm looking at this as an overall image, I like to look at the overall uh, tonal values in the image. So we have a lot of dark and bright tonal values in this image. Then I also like to look at the tonal values differences between the left side 
in the right side of the image. On the left side of the image, I feel like this is uh, just maybe a little too dark up here. There's there's like a really heavy darkness to this side of the image that's not over here. So the, And then down below, you'll notice that this side of the image is a lot brighter than that side of the image. So I'm going to adjust this right off the bat. To do that, I'm going to go into a graduated filter with a dodge. I'm just going to draw it in from the right hand side and that looks pretty good. So we got a match pretty much between the, the two sides now uh, in tonal values. Let's go back to color. Just looking at this a little more, uh, I'm going to do a quick crop because I feel like uh, the image, the water feels like it's flowing, you know, to the right and flowing off to the right, which it is, but it just feels like this wasn't um, level, nor was the top of this waterfall level. So slight uh, rotation for the crop it makes it look a lot more natural to my eyes. I'm going to go into here and do a, an automatic adjustment and see what Lightroom thinks it would like to do. Sometimes it does okay. In this case, I think it just isn't as contrasty enough. I'll pop some more shadows up. Did a good job of preserving highlights. I like where it put the whites and I like where it put the blacks. Let's add just a touch of overall clarity, a little overall texture, and maybe just a just a hair of dehaze. And that dehaze is going to bring out some texture in the water. So now we have this overall tonal values on the image. We're, we're going to use the adjustment brushes to develop for flow right now. And what I want that flow to do is I want your eyes to come in here, flow up this waterfall, flow up that waterfall, and be able to flow up this waterfall. We're looking for these things called flow blockers or flow interrupters. And what they are, are generally, or they're just any object that grabs your attention and keeps your attention there instead of allowing your eyes to follow the flow. In this case, uh, there's a real obvious one right here with the pipe, but I also notice that my eyes get stuck right here on this waterfall because it's brighter than everything around. And then I tend not to go in this corner. I'm not sure why. Uh, for me, maybe it's just because there's all this kind of foamy gunk down here that I wasn't really fond of when I was taking the picture. I wish it would have been a little bit more speed. This was a, an eddy, so there wasn't water coming into it. I do want to get rid of this flow blocker right now. So usually you don't see these kind of uh, issues um, with dust spots on water and, and textured shots because it just, they generally uh, disappear in the texture. But in that case, there was a dust spot, so we got rid of it. Okay, so the first one let's tackle is this big uh, rusty pipe that's sticking out of the water. I don't know what that's from. Uh, you never know what you're going to see in the water. We're just going to use some adjustment brushes. And you might have to go in like multiple times to see if you can make it more natural looking. And you'll notice you don't see my little dots in there. That's because I've hidden them. If you hit the H key, you can see the individual just little, uh, little adjustment brush or the little uh, spot removals that I've done. We'll hide those out because it's a lot easier to work on these kind of problems when you hide them. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. Uh, looks real natural to my eye at least. Maybe go back here a little bit. We'll zoom out. Yeah, that looks that looks fairly natural. It looks like it blends in real well. Another thing that I, I just noticed here is this, this is actually a really natural rock, but it's... Um, Kind of dark so we could either brighten that up uh, but since we're messing around with the spot removal tool why not see what that looks like when we click on it uh yeah that didn't uh that didn't do very good let's have lightroom readjust where it got its information from there we go yeah that's good that looks natural okay so that's a less of a flow blocker so i'm going to come up with an adjustment brush and mainly what i use the adjustment brushes for in this stage of the image is either darkening or burning or uh, brightening them. Darkening is called burning and brightening them is called dodging. And I'm going to burn in this area that I said was kind of grabbing my attention. And then the other thing that I want to burn in is up above. So I don't want your eyes to get stuck on those trees. And instead of doing like a overall darkness, if I wanted even a little darker, I'm going to just pop on a second brush and and brighten that up or darken it down a little bit. In the corner here, I feel like the um, water is just a little bit too bright. So let's darken that down a little bit. And still through this midsection, my eyes continually get stuck right there. 
and kind of stuck through there. Oh, and this foam, that foam definitely getting stuck on. So we're going to want to darken this area down a little more. Yeah, that's starting to look pretty good. I'm just going to lean back and take an overall look. So it looks to me that the flow is pretty good so far. Uh, let's, I'm not grabbing much attention down in here, so I'm going to do a quick dodge. Yeah, now we got a nice flow up the center. Eyes are not going here, and they're not going here. So there's a couple things that we can do about that. Uh, when you have an area of high contrast, that tends to attract people's eyes. So I'm going to make this little waterfall a little bit more contrasty just by darkening in the images over there. So I'll use the adjustment brush just or darken in the rock. So I'm just going to darken in that rock over here. So another one on it. And this is just adding some contrast to our image. To me, I feel like my eyes are attracted there more often now, which is good, but not over here. So. So what, uh, my, when I go this way, I end up on this really bright rock. I'm going to darken that down. And I'm just going to darken this so that we match the tonal values there. And now I'm feeling a little better. But this area is pretty dark compared to over here. Like the, the shadows are extremely dark in here. So I'm going to come in with a dodge brush. We're just going to dodge this area, but I don't want the brights to get any brighter. I just want the darks to get a little brighter. So I'm going to use a range mask. I'm going to use a luminance mask. And when I click on show luminance mask, anything that's red here is what's getting affected. This slider controls how much of the whites are going to get affected. And this is how much of the blacks. I'm going to slide this white slider to the left so that I just select the black parts of the image. There we go. Yeah, and that's just going to bring up that a little bit and pull your eyes over there. So overall, I feel like um, the flow works pretty well through this whole image. And now I just feel like uh, some of the we could bring out some more texture in the water. One thing that I don't really like over here is this bubble texture, though. So the first thing I'm going to attack is I'm going to go into clarity and I'm going to do a negative clarity brush. And this will help blur this water and make it look more like the water in the rest of the image. Maybe we'll do two of those because that's working extremely well. Just blur in that water a little bit more. Uh, we're blurring the foam a little more so that it looks like the rest of the image or the rest of the water. That's nice. That's nice. All right. The next thing I want to do is I want to bring out some some texture across everything. So we're going to add some plus texture, a little texture, a little dehaze, and some extra contrast. And I'm going to brush this uh, combination throughout all of the water. It's just going to make everything kind of get a lot more textured, a lot more stringy. There, we got some nice texture building in there. You notice like this corner is bluer than the rest of the corner. I don't know why that is. It might be the speed of the motion. This uh, our, our rivers up on the North Shore have this root beer color. It's caused um, from the swamps. So the tannins in the swamps kind of stain the water, this brownish color. It's like tea. You know, if you're making tea, you throw your bag in and it makes it kind of brownish. That's what's going on here as well. Uh, so it's naturally occurring. Um, but for some reason, the foam over in this corner went blue, which I don't like. So I'm going to drag in an adjustment brush from this angle. And then we'll switch it to um, temperature instead of the others. And I'm just going to warm it up. So we'll reset this to zero. I'm just going to... I'm using my keyboard to, to tap it over one at a time until the, the tonal values or the, the color value here, the kind of that bluish look goes away and blends in more with the rest of the water. Yeah, that looks good. There we go. So that was a real quick edit on what you might want to do with the waterfall. There might be some more stuff that you could do in this one. Um, so, you know, it might be kind of fun to try this. We come in with a dodge brush in the background. And then we go down to our range mask, we'll put that luminance up and I just want to select kind of the brightest parts of the cedar in the background 
and make sure we don't select the water so we can come back in and just erase this part of it maybe not the rocks either because we darken those down so now we're just affecting the very very limited amount of the brush back there or the trees back there we could brighten that up a little bit just to make it stand out on the brights from the background and then maybe warm it up just a touch to match more of the overall image oh, that looks really nice my eyes are free to flow they come into the image here and they fall these waterfalls across we don't have that ugly pipe anymore this weird rock is gone although i'm not sure that you necessarily needed to do that and we got a lot of texture in the water it makes it extremely interesting to look at so that's a basic edit and how you might want to edit your waterfall shots I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for shooting with me today. We'll see you next time.